This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. OPEC Plus is set to stick to an oil production deal agreed last year at its meeting on June 2nd and raise July output targets by 432,000 barrels per day, six OPEC Plus sources told Reuters, rebuffing Western calls for a faster increase to lower surging prices. Western nations, grappling with record inflation rates that are threatening economic growth, have repeatedly asked the group to accelerate its output hikes. Members from the group maintain that the oil market is balanced and that the recent price hikes are not related to fundamentals. Oil prices rose on Thursday, extending a cautious rally this week on signs of tight supply while the European Union EU, wrangles with Hungary over plans to ban imports from Russia, the world's second-largest crude exporter, after it invaded Ukraine. Brent crude futures were up $1.60, or 1.4%, to $115.63 a barrel at 13.52 GMT. U.S. West Texas Intermediate (WTI) crude futures climbed $2.33, or 2.1%, to $112.66 a barrel. A bigger-than-expected drawdown in U.S. crude inventories in the week to May 20 following soaring exports, buoyed the market on Wednesday. U.S. refiners picked up the pace of activity, boosting overall capacity use to the highest levels since before the pandemic. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector, Britain announced a 25% windfall tax on oil and gas producers' profits on Thursday, alongside a £15 billion, $18.9 billion, package of support for households struggling to meet soaring energy bills. The move, which will give each UK household a £400 discount on their energy bill and more for lowest-income households, marks a change of heart for Prime Minister Boris Johnson's government which had previously resisted windfall taxes, calling them a deterrent to investment. It is the second emergency policy intervention to help with rising bills this year. Global liquefied natural gas, LNG, buyers and sellers are bracing for more uncertainty over Russian supplies and a murky demand outlook from Europe and top importer China in the run-up to peak winter season, industry executives said. Western sanctions on Russia due to the Ukraine invasion have sparked fears of disruption of Russian gas supply to Europe, sending global gas prices to all-time highs earlier this year and raising energy security concerns. Moscow calls its action a special military operation. In addition to unpredictable weather, it remains unclear whether there will be further cuts in Russian supplies to Europe, the executive said. Also uncertain is whether Europe can build new LNG import infrastructure in time to replace massive Russian volumes, they added. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. The world refined copper market showed a 25,000 ton deficit in March, compared with a 95,000 ton surplus in February, the International Copper Study Group, ICSG, said in its latest monthly bulletin. In 2021 the market was in a deficit of 439,000 tonnes, against a 415,000 tonne shortfall a year earlier, the ICSG said. World refined copper output in March was 2.206 million tonnes while consumption was 2.231 million tonnes. Years of underinvestment in mining of metals essential to energy transition, Supply shocks and high energy prices will continue to drive commodity prices higher, Eurasian Resources Group, ERG, Chief Executive Benedict Sabotka said on Wednesday. Combined with COVID-related logistical issues and demand for transparency on sustainability these factors have brought together all the ingredients for a perfect storm in commodity markets, he told the Reuters Global Markets Forum in Davos. Sabotka said that a commodity supercycle has now begun and will carry on for the next 30 years, predicting a 20% rise in copper prices by the end of 2022. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Russia is ready to provide a humanitarian corridor for vessels carrying food to leave Ukraine. In return for the lifting of some sanctions, the Interfax news agency cited Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Andrei Rodenko as saying on Wednesday. 
Ukraine's Black Seaports have been blocked since Russia sent thousands of troops into Ukraine on February 24 and more than 20 million tons of grain are stuck in silos in the country. Russia and Ukraine usually account for nearly a third of global wheat supplies and the lack of significant grain exports from Ukrainian ports is contributing to a growing global food crisis. Ukraine is also a major exporter of corn and sunflower oil. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.